Speed. Power. Skill. Strength. Daring. Momentum. Harley, I'm going to punch you. Harley from Epic Meal Time, I am going to punch you in the face and also your body, probably. A few moments later. Uppercut Harley! Oh, Two, three, four tough. shots in a row! Harley unanswered! Aaron's trying to cover up. Referee's oh, taking a look! He's taking a he's look! He's taking a look! Yep, and that's it! That's it. Now today on the channel, we're going to take a look at Game Grumps. Game Grumps is a channel that has been around for many, many years, being created all the way back in 2012. The channel would grow an audience of over 5 million subscribers. It would bring in a large amount of views every month by being consistent and having an incredible upload schedule. So why in 22, after years of dominance on the platform, have Game Grumps struggled to pull over 500,000 views on the majority of the recent videos? In order for us to understand Game Grumps' recent decline, we have to start from the beginning, before the channel would even hit 1 million subscribers. So strap in because there's a laundry list of controversies that we will have to go over in this video. Now Game Grumps would be created in July of 2012 by JonTron and Ego Raptor, aka Aaron. Their first video together would be uploaded on July 18th, 2012, just eight days after creating the channel, and their first upload on the channel would be titled Kirby Superstar Spring Breeze Adventures. This video would introduce the audience to the channel, and this video would also showcase the chemistry that Aaron and John had while playing together. So Game Grumps is a channel where we're gonna play video games and general, gr general grump around about it. Grump around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you don't know me, I'm John Tron and he's eager after. Wait, I'm John Tron and he's eager after. <laughs> exactly. This chemistry helped grow their channel and it would take them no time to get to 100,000 subscribers. Taking a look at the Wayback Machine on July 23rd of 2012, their channel would already be very close to 100k subscribers and a week later, the channel would exceed 100,000 subscribers. Game Grumps would grow to over 1 million subscribers in their very first year creating content together and everything was going great for the channel until JonTron would leave Game Grumps kind of abruptly. John would leave Game Grumps in July of 2013. This would be the same month that Game Grumps would hit 1 million subscribers. Game Game Grumps would upload this video titled Ode to John, where John would tell the viewer that he was leaving Game Grumps to focus on his main channel. But it's, it is a job, you know, I gotta show up there all, uh, all the time and do all the things associated with it, so it really does take away from my ability to do other things that you guys have been getting mad at me about, like not making enough Jawtrons, so that, that's what I'm gonna put my focus in. I wanna make like a... By this time, John had already moved to New York and Game Grumps would already replace John with Dan Avidan at the end of the video. Now this separation between JonTron and Aaron would ignite a conspiracy theory surrounding the abrupt departure of JonTron from the channel and also Aaron acting like JonTron didn't even exist after John left. Now it was brought up that during the time of John leaving the channel, John and Aaron could have been butting heads on where they wanted the channel to end up. That Gamer from Mars explains the conspiracy theory subreddit in depth in his video so if you'd like to learn more about the conspiracies surrounding John's leaving, I'd say go check out his video. I'll leave a link to it in the description. After John left Game Grumps, it took quite Quite a while for the channel to grow from 1 million subscribers to 2 million subscribers, but eventually they would hit 2 million subscribers in July of 2015. Now 2015 would be the start of the list of controversies. While Dan and Aaron were playing through the game Sonic Adventures DX, they were reading a walkthrough guide that would help the two find 3 emerald pieces. The 3 emerald pieces were randomized, which means that the walkthrough wouldn't help them that much to find the pieces. Dan would go on to say this during the video. What the fuck is wrong with him? <laughs> I know. Like what is actually wrong? Wrong with this guy? <laughs> Hold on, I'm. What the fuck help does he think he's providing anybody? I'm gonna look. I'm gonna say the name out loud because people are gonna think that. Yeah, it's uh, the fact walkthrough by Pizza. Now I just showed you the censored video that the Game Grumps would re-upload a day after Dan would dox the author of the walkthrough. Dan would apologize on the same day, which was August 19th, 2015 on his subreddit. Dan would say, on an episode that went up today, I read the name of the guy who wrote the Sonic walkthrough we've been using off of the walkthrough itself. At the time, I thought it was being funny, but I should have absolutely had the foresight to realize that some people would actually seek him out 
and harass him. He would finish up the apology with this statement. Sometimes it's easy to forget that names and faces we see on TV and the internet are connected to actual people with real lives and that the things we do have direct consequences. No one knows that better than my friends and I do. And I should have been thinking in a more responsible manner. I made a mistake and I'm truly sorry to the walkthroughs author and fans that I let down in the process. Now, even though this would be a damper in the growth of the channel, Game Grumps was still able to grow to over 3 million subscribers in February of 2016. 2016 would also be a year where Table Flip would air its last season over on Sling TV, which angered some international viewers because Sling TV was only available for people living in the United States, and those episodes would also be hidden behind a paywall. But eventually, Table Flip would be aired over on Game Grumps, but with a longer wait period for the new episodes. The last episode would be aired on October 12, 2016. Now, 2017 was a wild year for Game Grumps. They would grow to over 4 million subscribers in August, but would also slow down the production of Steamrolled, which was a middle slot show that would air at 12 p.m. on the channel. Actually, Game Grumps would stop the production of three shows in 2017 through 2018. These shows were Steam Train, Steam Rolled, and Grumpcade. This would be the beginning of Game Grumps' decline, and then more controversies would start to happen. Now, even though Game Grumps would hit 5 million subscribers in 2019, this would be the last time that they would grow over 1 million subscribers leading up to 2022. Now, during the summertime of 2019, Game Grumps would find themselves in some key controversies, the first of which would would happen in June of 2019. This would be when Game Grumps would take the Tano Mojo approach of holding an event. Game Grumps held a two-day garage sale when they were moving offices. Game Grumps for some reason only expected 100 fans to show up, but even before the event, there were 800 RSVPs. This event saw fans waiting outside for almost five hours and people had to hand out water so that the fans wouldn't pass out. Eventually, the police showed up to shut it down and that made fans even more pissed because they were waiting in line and never got to meet Game Grumps. Like just imagine waiting at an event for a couple of hours just to meet your favorite content creator, you get all the way up to the front of the line and then the police shut it down. And then the Game Grumps tweet out that the second day would be canceled so you never ever get to meet them. Here's what Game Grumps tweeted out the same day. Thank you everyone for coming out to our garage sale. We're overwhelmed and humbled by the response. Unfortunately, we went way over capacity today and we will not be open tomorrow. We're sorry to any disappointed. We're going to plan something bigger and better for you all i.e. the Tanamojo approach. Later that summer, an animator by the name of Sir Pello would upload a parody video directed towards storytime animators. It was all in good fun, but Aaron took it onto himself to defend animators and stated that Sir Pello's video was just straight up mean. Sir Pello would reply and apologize, but other content creators would tell him not to. Aaron would go on to further the argument by saying, the fact that all the people patting you on the back for this cartoon are old school Newgrounds types with very few STAs, commenting speaks volumes. You could use this thread to pretend it's all in good fun, but it's not fun, it's mean, it hurts. This would lead to Newground OGs to poke fun at Aaron. Later on, Aaron would release an official apology handcrafted on Apple Notes. In this apology, Aaron would talk about the racist remarks that he made back in the day and how it was being brought back up after this whole back and forth with Sir Pello. Eventually things would blow over until the Ben situation. Ben was once an editor for Game Grumps, and during 2020, Ben's past would come back to bite him. During 2020, people would dig up old tweets from Ben. These tweets were directed at Jacob Sartorius. Ben would state that he got the nudes from Jacob, plus more, and at the time, Jacob was underage. Ben would later post an apology tweet that came off very sarcastic. After the apology, nothing was ever really said, and when the question was brought up about Ben, Aaron and Dan just ignored the question, until Aaron would later post a response on Twitter. This response would basically state that Aaron did tell Ben Ben that it wasn't cool, but Aaron was giving him space because Ben's family member just recently passed away. Aaron would also apologize for staying silent throughout the controversy while also still keeping Ben employed as an editor for the channel. It just seems like a common theme for Aaron is to remain quiet about certain situations until he can't anymore. Later that same year, Aaron would tweet out a statement about BLM and how he was torn about making a statement regarding Game Grumps' support of BLM because Game Grumps is a brand, not a person. But with the backlash he would receive, he would end up apologizing and say that he wished that he wasn't so hesitant on making a statement on the behalf of Game Grumps. Later on, Game Grumps would come out with an official statement stating that they stand in support of BLM. During this statement, they also pointed out their own racism throughout the early years of YouTube and how they apologized for it. After this statement, Game Grumps would go through their videos and delete all the videos that had racist comments in them. But people took notice that Aaron and Dan only deleted the most known videos, and if you dig deep enough through their 8,000 videos, you could probably still find some more. Now we get to the present year. Game Grumps over the past couple of months have struggled to gain views. I think 
think some of the reasons have to do with Game Grumps stopping production of some of their other shows that gave them more variety. I spent some time going through some subreddits and posts, and a lot of the new posts highlight how boring Game Grumps have gotten over the years and how more recently the videos seem forced and not as free flowing as they once were. But that's just what happens when you do videos with one person for over 10 years. You lose things to speak about. I also think them getting rid of other filler shows makes it harder to gain views. Just think of it this way. Say they're playing a game that you don't like and that game series goes on for 70 videos and they don't have anything else to watch. You're not going to watch the channel until the series is over and they come out with a new Let's Play series and even then maybe you don't like the new series either. Now recently Aaron would box Harley from Epic Mealtime in the Creator Clash boxing event and would lose by TKO in the second round. Game Grumps has had its second month in a row struggling to hit over 25 million views which is an extreme drop off in views when you take into account that in 2019 Game Grumps was getting close to 100 million views a month. So what do you think has happened with Game Grumps? Do you think Game Grumps will ever come back from this downward spiral and if so how do you think they'll do it? Let me know in the comments below. This has been the rise and decline of Game Grumps. Also some of this information came from the Rank Grumps subreddit. I'll leave a link to the original post so you could read through everything that they have done over the years because there's way more that I could ever list in this one video. Also if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for 100,000 subscribers. You all have been so kind to me this past year and I couldn't ask for a better audience. So thank you. An official video will be out either later today or tomorrow. But again, I just want to say thank you. Make sure to follow me on Instagram to send me any requests you have on a content creator you want me to look at. And again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.